Hi everyone, I am Kyler Cheatham joined by Adam Cheatham here and we are talking about some hot topics today regarding Microsoft Great Plains and kind of the end of life roadmap of what that looks like. So Adam, you've been getting a lot of grief on the internet. You've been almost like canceled, if you will, when it comes to Microsoft Great Plains because of all of the vendor feedback. Can you kind of tell us why that is? Well, for starters, um, you know, this is a, a bit of a disruptive story um, because you know, vendors that, that sell and maintain uh, Microsoft Great, Great Plains make a lot of money off of that. Um, now, um, we've gotten quite a lot of feedback o over a multitude of channels about that blog. Uh, for those of you who are uh, who have, have recently read it, um, you may have noticed that we've also updated that blog to make sure that it is it is accurate. Um, for starters, though, the Microsoft at one point did come out and announce a plan to end of life great Great Plains. Um, and I, I believe the year was for 2025. Um, now, the reason that I know that this is true is because I have had vendor uh, clients who have called and t told me freaking out before we even wrote the blog that they ha heard from their vendor, Microsoft is going to be end of life in Great Plains support in 2025, and it's time to upgrade to Microsoft Dynamics um, FNO or Business Central. So, um, out there in the marketplace, vendors are telling their clients that this is going to happen. Um, I didn't make this story up. I didn't get it from in, from some fictional place. I'm getting it from uh, from clients of ours who are sharing the uh, the pressure that their vendors and, and system integrators and, and system uh, support teams are applying on them to upgrade from. Uh, Microsoft Great Plains to a, a more lucrative platform for that. Gotcha. Um, and so let's kind of back up and talk about what Microsoft Great Plains is and yeah. why companies have such an affinity for it. So uh, Microsoft Great Plains is a very strong finance focused ERP. Um, it does do so, uh, quite a lot of things in the manufacturing space and the, uh, the distribution space, but it's mostly focused on finance. Um, it's been around for quite some time. Um, it's a it's a strong legacy system and has a, a, a bit of a cult following that not very many um, legacy ERP uh, systems enjoy. So Microsoft folks that are on Microsoft Great Plains have been uh, tend to have been on it for quite some time. And um, and really like the functionality in it, which is part of why this story is so disruptive, because they like this software system, mm -hmm. and uh, to to be uh, threatened with end of life by their software provider um, is a is, is a scary moment for those businesses. Absolutely, and so in kind of digging into a lot of the feedback that you get, and I think it's important for our community to know. We get feedback from vendors all the time about content we put out because um, we are completely agnostic and independent so that those opinions, because they're not influenced by anyone, that means that a lot of times the vendors had wished we had said something different. So that's pretty typical for an independent entity like third stage because we're going to recommend what's best for our clients not what's best for the vendor or so vendors like us. That's kind of the, the disruptive nature of the content that we put out. Just with Great Plains, we seem to have kind of struck a nerve in there. Um, if anyone wants some comedic relief, you can head over to our Google reviews where Adam has put the, the cheat in Cheatham according to the bot <laughs> from some reviews there. Um, and we share a last name, so you know I, I really um, take offense to that deeply. But <laughs> we just a side note of kind of how that works when it comes to our vendor communications. It we talk a lot about it with Eric that we're kind of 
frenemies, if you will, when it comes to vendors. They're important and value partners, but we don't do what they say. Um, so just kind of a caveat to kind of understand that relationship. So Adam, when it comes to Great Plains and you get this information as a client, what are what are the next steps to kind of deciding what you do? So um, there are a number of things that are important to, to remember in this space. First and foremost, um, just because Microsoft is going to eventually one day stop supporting Microsoft Great Plains, that doesn't mean that there won't be um, av uh, available services for supporting Great Plains. Um, there are literally thousands of Microsoft partners in, um, across the world who support all kinds of different Microsoft packages, Great Plains included, um, and, and more will pop up as Microsoft starts to vacate that space. Um, so that doesn't just because Microsoft stops supporting it doesn't mean that you won't get support. I have clients on all kinds of different software systems who uh, which have have been end of life. There is no support for them. Some of them are written in languages that uh, that don't exist in programming anymore, and they still uh, sup uh, have partners to help them support those systems. So that doesn't just because Microsoft vacates that space doesn't mean that you uh, you no longer can use Microsoft Great Plains as your software uh, enterprise software. So that's thing one. Um, thing two is that uh, as you start to think about what your upgrade path looks like, the the upgrade path for Microsoft Great Plains to uh, Microsoft Dynamics 365 is, for all intents and purposes, a brand new implementation. So what I would encourage you to understand and as you're upgrading or, or considering it is there are other software packages out there that may be a more viable fit for you than Microsoft Dynamics, uh, uh, whether it's Business Central, Finance Operations, Supply Chain, or uh, whichever package it is uh, they're calling it these days. Um, you have lots more options, particularly uh, as you're thinking about your company size. You know, companies that are on Microsoft Great Plains tend to be in the small to medium business space, um, and in a lot of ways, there are other systems that are better fits. Um, Enforce Line, NetSuite, um, you know, Microsoft Business Central is a viable uh, uh, upgrade path. Um, Epicor, uh, Acumatica, there are, there are tons of other options out there that you may consider if you are thinking about upgrading from uh, Great Plains. Gotcha. And so why would a company like Microsoft discontinue something that seems to have quite a cult following, if you will? Well, we're seeing this um, even more so in the um, in the uh, software as a subscription space. Um, right now, Microsoft or any service provider only makes money off of Great Plains as a maintenance package. Um, which is typically a pretty low fee. Um, as you start thinking about migrating to a uh, subscription service um, like uh, Dynamics 365, you are now creating a monthly cash flow option where your uh, where Microsoft's clients um, will pay for software month to month. That's a dramatic change in the revenue model for them and a, and a significant financial incentive. Um, that's part of it, right? There are also some costs to maintaining, my, uh, you know, more antiquated software, uh, and as it pertains to the the um, company that that owns it. Uh, Microsoft right now is starting to focus all of their research and development dollars on other software systems. So keeping up with Great Plains, the security patches, uh, making sure that it, uh, particularly from a cybersecurity perspective. Um, bug fixes, those types of things. It costs time and resources, and uh, Microsoft, as as you would expect, would rather put that time and resource, those time and resources, into um, a more lucrative pa uh, package that allows for the creation of a more consistent revenue stream. And it's not just Microsoft that's doing this. Um, you know, uh, and uh, what's interesting about this is that the other package that I've seen this the most. Uh, frequently with um, is uh, JD Edwards, uh, which is owned by Oracle. Um, JD uh, uh, JD Edwards was almost uh, um, 
an accidental, uh, or we'll call it an incidental purchase when my when Oracle purchased PeopleSoft, and they they wanted to get away from supporting JD Edwards from the moment they purchased PeopleSoft. I think it was in the 90s, uh, and they have been unable to sunset that program. That doesn't mean that or, uh, Oracle isn't trying to get people off of JD Edwards and onto Oracle ERP Cloud, um, because again, Oracle ERP Cloud is a um, subscription software that creates a, um, a monthly or a quarterly uh, revenue for Oracle. And I've even had clients who have wanted to compare JD Edwards to Oracle ERP Cloud and see which uh, whether it's uh, more viable to uh, put a sink more resources into a larger JD Edwards footprint or to move into Oracle ERP Cloud and Oracle won't sell it to them. They wouldn't give them a price sheet. They wouldn't give them any uh, costs on what additional licenses would be. Uh, they, they wouldn't provide implementation services costs. So it's the, the point here is that um, there's a revenue side of this and there's a cost side of this. It's better revenue for these ERP companies to get you into the cloud, not a subscription service. And um, it also is a lower cost for them to continue maintaining these antiquated systems. Gotcha. I want to come back to the subscription model in just a little bit, but just so we know, what is Microsoft Great Plains now going to do? Are they going to end their support for the system in 2025 or what's kind of the latest there? No, so um, they're continuing support for quite uh, for several years beyond that 2025, that original 2020 or more recent 2025 deadline. Um, so they'll continue to support that package. Uh, what's likely to happen is that they'll come out in a couple of years and say, all right, we're going to end the life it, uh, create a little bit of buzz around it, see if they can't get a couple of upgrades out of it and then walk that back. Um, this is pretty common in this space. Uh, you'll see it with other uh, software providers. That's what's probably going to happen. My guess is that um, as the as the space comes together, it, there's still quite a um, quite a long runway as far as uh, the roadmap for Microsoft Great Plains is concerned. Right. So just out of curiosity, because it can look like, you know, you don't like Microsoft or something like that. Is that true or is that true for any system that third stage may or may not recommend? Yeah, and, um, for starters, the, uh, third stage and I uh, as well are 100 percent industry software technology agnostic, totally independent. I don't have a preference for which software uh, products my clients are on, whether it's what their legacy system is or what their future system might be. Um, my main focus is to consider technology as an enabler of business objectives. And when technology is serving, serving to inhibit those business objectives, it's time to make some changes. Um, so, you know, if Microsoft Great Plains is still continuing to serve your business and allow you to grow, then great, keep it. Um, I, I don't if you're on any other software platform, if it's doing what you want it to do and allowing you to grow, then keep it. There's no need to spend a ton of money on an ERP upgrade because that's that that does get expensive. So, uh, you know, I don't have a preference on, uh, on what that looks like. And we are um, we're recommending different software packages, Microsoft included um, all the time. So I, I would say that. Uh, for those who think that we're biased against Microsoft, um, get in line because there are folks that think that we're, we're biased against every other platform that's their favorite. Um, and and it's just part of the uh, the cost of doing business for a firm, which um, takes an independent stance. You get pe people that want to throw rocks at you from just about every direction. Sure. And just for comparison's sake, we do have a top 10 ERP system list just generally for 2022 and Microsoft D63 sorry Cassie cut that one <laughs> Microsoft D363 geez <laughs> Microsoft Dynamics 365 is number one on our list this year and that's a new movement in that leadership so that's a huge placement we do PR campaigns around it that type of thing so that should showcase you know that we we are we have great partners at Microsoft um, and continue to support them when it makes sense for our clients. 
So moving to that subscription model, I'm interested to hear your feedback. You know, we talk a lot about ERP cloud and what that means in migrating from maybe an on-premise system to a cloud solution and the costs that come with that. So a lot of times we've heard from our community, our audience or our clients that these are being kind of pitched or um, communicated in a way that um, equates to cost savings and that might not be the case in the long term. So I wondered your feedback when it came to that subscription based model and cloud yeah. solutions. So I mean it's to get beyond a five year total cost of ownership on cost savings and expenses is is really difficult to do. Um, on a five year total cost of ownership, we do tend to see that um, on premise versus um, versus subscription services do tend to be about the same if you start to factor in all the hardware support that you need for on prem um, and, and, and the, the maintenance fees and, and those types of things because um, you're going to have to buy servers and you're going to have to maintain a server room and all those types of things you have to pay somebody to do that. Um, so there, there is a cost associated with that on the on prem side that we see about over five years. It's about even. Um, the challenge is after that, um, your license fees don't go down, they go up um, as time goes on, whereas uh, your your maintenance fees for uh, your system integrator and, and uh, maintenance partner um, remain more or less static and are a, um, a fraction of the cost. So um, there's a good chance if you looked farther out at it, that from a, um, just a pure dollar comparison, um, on premise could uh, could shake out to be less expensive um, on the whole, but um, at the same time, you don't get the benefits of continuing to have that live updating software. One of the greatest benefits of of cloud and subscription based software packages is you are always up to date um, and you are always uh, getting all of the upgrades that are being deployed with the system. Um, as opposed to um, being stuck in a more static environment where it's on you to determine when your upgrades are brought in um, and it's much more difficult to maintain that on your own. Gotcha. So it's kind of sounds like it really as as in my favorite thing for consultants to always say is it depends, right? Yes. Is always the, <laughs> me, yes. the answer. It depends on the organization and their needs. When it comes to the subscription based type of model, is that where the industry is heading as a whole? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, you know, the, the subscription based model is, is not going away anytime soon. Um, it seems to me that that's a, uh, that's a, well, at least for me personally, that's a bit of a challenge in that, um, you know, it doesn't matter how successful your business is, um, your subscription fees will always be there. Um, and it puts you in a position where you're dependent on continuing to pay those fees to be able to run your business. Um, it would almost be like having to pay a heart, uh, a cardiologist to keep my heart pumping. Um, and if I, uh, depending on the circumstances of my life, if I, um, if I don't have the money to pay for that, well, too bad. Um, sucks for you. Uh, so it, as as businesses change, it it does become create a different dependency on your software and the costs associated to it um, that's really hard to mitigate those costs uh, as time goes on so i'd say that this is this is going to stick around long term you're going to see more and more of these types of things not just as software platforms as a service but also integration platforms as a service to be able to connect two two different cloud services to each other you'll pay for that so now all of a sudden you're paying three different subscriptions um you know on on the whole so it's it's not going away anytime soon that's for sure gotcha and and what would be some best practices for companies to be able to budget for these types of subscription models or what's the best way that you recommend to prepare when it comes to considering that in the evaluation process yeah, so focus first and foremost on getting the right system that fits your business um, that is going to enable the type of growth and objectives that uh, that you're shooting for, because um, if in the end you continue to grow, you don't have to face that problem. Um, so you want to first and foremost get the right system um, uh, and, and implement it well is the second piece of it. Um, 
try to stay as out of the box as possible. Uh, try to uh, stay as vanilla as possible. Know that you know modifications to software are required to to maintain competitive advantages and and um, and who you are in the marketplace. And that's important to also realize. But um, on the whole, implementing as close to standard functionality as possible and adjusting to be able to accommodate that um, is another important piece that will allow you to continue to grow with that system um, and, and allow you to continue to reap the benefits of that system as it evolves. Interesting. Those are definitely all great considerations um, when moving to uh, you know, a cloud-based platform or looking at that subscription model in general. Um, any final thoughts when it comes to Microsoft Great Plains or any you know, message to your haters out there when it comes to any additional feedback or um, yeah. recommendations for clients? Um, for sure. So again, um, I didn't make that up. I got it directly from the horse's mouth. Vendors who are telling clients that come to us that their vendor said Great Plains is end of life in 2025. Um, that message has changed, of course, um, and we're, we're glad to see that. Um, and it's, uh, you know, Microsoft Great Plains is a fantastic software platform. It, it uh, serves our, our clients very well um, in, a lot, in a lot of spaces. So I would say that, um, you know, don't be afraid to, to keep Microsoft Great Plains. Um, but at the same time, if you find that you've outgrown it and it's no longer servicing your needs, or you want to think long term and say, you know, this means that um, there's a shift in tone around Great Plains and that the, the support that it's going to get from Microsoft will continue to wane in the future, then uh, give us a call. Uh, reach out to us on LinkedIn um, or through our website and just let's have a conversation about where you're at and maybe I can help you figure out what it is the best next steps are for you. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today, Adam. We, we always love having you. Um, sure. And if you do have additional questions, um, Adam's contact information is below in our description. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our software comparison playlist if you'd like some more information on software systems in general.